our third episode, and we are here once again at Thoroughbred's Chop House and Seafood Grill on Restaurant Row in Myrtle Beach, enjoying a wonderful happy hour, and of course, some fellowship. We're networking, we're meeting new people, and it's always such a great time to uh, get everyone together in the community. I just wanted to uh, let you know that we are on the YouTube channel. You can watch this show on that. You can subscribe. We would love to get as many subscribers as possible so you never miss an episode. You can also find us on Facebook as well. You can uh, check out our Facebook page and keep up to date with all our episodes. Where our next location may be, we may start taking the show on the road a little bit on location. And also, uh, we will be uh, maybe changing a few of the days here and there because some people can't always make it on a Tuesday night. So we may change up the day as well. So in order to stay up to date with all the information, please keep us in uh, on subscribe on YouTube or friend us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, I just wanted to let you know many of you show on uh, Hot Talk 99.5 and that I recently left that position as co-host. And that was last Thursday was my, my last day. And I started a new job over at the Pelicans Ballpark. So I will be the corporate marketing manager and the on-field host. So I'll see you at every single game as well. But what I wanted to say was, uh, first of all, that I appreciated so many of the wonderful messages on Facebook, texts, emails from so many people that were, you know, they expressed disappointment that I was leaving the radio show because they woke up to my voice and my silly stories for the last five and a half years. But they, they wished me well, and I so appreciated that. Uh, I didn't realize, it, it, I didn't realize how many people were actually listening because I'm usually in a room by myself. But it was so great to hear from everybody. So I wanted to thank, thank you for that. I do feel a little bit heartbroken that there's not going to be a strong female voice on the radio uh, here, and even on TV, expressing opinions and logical thoughts and, and just tackling the daily news every day. So I, I am sad about that, but I hope someone will rise to the occasion and, and take on that role. It is a tough role to, to talk about the news and politics every day. So. I hope someone does uh, join in and take the seat with Dave Priest. So, uh, but I just wanted to thank you all for all your well wishes. But now I get to talk about baseball, family fun, um, just, you know, Thirsty Thursday and all those good things. So I am looking forward to that and, of course, sleeping past 2.30 in the morning. That's <laughs> that is going to be a big plus. So, uh, but I hope you'll come see, see me at the ballpark. We miss you. Oh, I miss you too already, George. But I, I wanted to just tell you that there are so many accomplished women in this community. And it, they come from all different walks of life. And they have achieved so much, whether it's in politics, in business, uh, with community events and uh, fundraising and reaching out to the community and doing wonderful things. And that's why we created the show. So being that I'm not going to be on the radio, we, when we started this show, I never thought that I would be off the radio. So I'm so glad that we have this show going now because I feel that it's even more important now to bring those voices to you, telling you the stories and uh, telling you what's happening in the community and the wonderful things that are going on. So we're not going to focus on negative news and politics here. It's all about uh, inspiring you, informing you, and igniting your spirit. And that's what we are here to talk about on the Liz Callaway Show, Our Voice Ignited. So I just wanted to tell you who our first guests are, uh, or get three guests today. We have uh, the North Myrtle Beach City Mayor. We have Marilyn Hatley as our first guest. And our second guest would be Linda Ketron. You may be familiar with her Movable Feast program that she does uh, every single Friday luncheons uh, with famous authors for the last 21 years straight. That's amazing. But she's also here to talk about something else. She's with the Bike the Neck program, and we're going to talk about that. And it's a volunteer organization that uh, is bringing bike paths and health and community to um, our neighborhoods. And also, we're going to talk to Jennifer Johnson of the Cancer Heroes of the Carolinas, uh, one of my 
former co-workers. She works over at Dick Broadcasting Company, and she's a remarkable woman, mother, and uh, she has a, a just a very touching story to share with you and uh, ways that you can help also. Now, I mentioned that there are a lot of accomplished women in this community, and I just wanted to name a few because some of you are new to the area and you don't realize this, but, you know, a lot of people think about the South and like, oh, the good old boys network, and that, that's probably very true. We'll hear more about that from, from <laughs> the mayor. But, I mean, look at how far we've come. Our Horry County Auditor, Dr. M. Lois Ergel, is a, is a woman. These are all women. Horry County Treasurer, Angie Jones. Uh, the North Myrtle Beach Mayor, Marilyn Hatley. North Myrtle Beach Chamber President, Cheryl Kilday. Myrtle Beach City Mayor is also a woman, Brenda Bethune. She's the first uh, female mayor of Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach Police Chief, Amy Prock. Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce President and CEO, Karen Reardon. She was our fir very first guest on the Liz Calloway Show. And Conway City Mayor, Barbara Blaine Bellamy. Just to name a few that have raised, that have risen through the ranks in politics um, in this area. So. That says a lot about our community. I mean, it's a long road, right, Marilyn? That's right. Yes, but, um, but you, you've all blazed the trail for the rest of us, and we are so grateful. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, that today is Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday. So, <laughs> so celebrate, of course, tomorrow is the beginning of Lent. Uh, Ash Wednesday is tomorrow. But also Friday, does anybody know what March 8th is? Friday, March 8th. International Women's Day. Yes. So that is really, really uh, a big day it, globally. It's a really big deal because of the fact that we all have to remember to fuel each other's flames. And that's what the International Women's Day is all about, is about raising each other up. Now, what I wanted to do was, um, I just wanted to see if there's a lady that can join us up here right now. Do I have any volunteers maybe from this table? Want to come join us? Come on up. <laughs> yes, here we go. Let's give a round of applause. All right. So you're going to hold this as your microphone and also speak into this one. Now, what is your name? Carol Pagelson. Carol Pagelson. Thank you for Pagelson. joining. Pagelson. I wanted to ask you a few questions. Okay. Because International Women's Day is all about uh, really committing to each other as women to help each other. And I wanted to see if these are some things that you think women could do. If you could start doing this tomorrow to make life better for the rest of us, right? We could all chip in and, and do some great things. All right. So how about this? If you were in a group of a bunch of people, whether you're working on a, a collaborative project or something like that, and you heard someone talking about an idea that you know another woman had initiated. Would you speak up and give that woman credit and say, hey, you know, so-and-so had that idea, or Mary had that idea last week. You're right, that is a good idea. You betcha. Yes, and that's what we have to do. We have to remind people where the original idea came from, yeah. just so we make sure we put them on the map. Here's another suggestion for International Women's Day to just keep in mind. Uh, invite another woman to that so-called table. Because what happens is when, sometimes they say, when women rise to the top and uh, in an organization and they get inside into the, to the table, so to speak, they are so grateful to be there and they don't realize that really they deserve to be there. And it's our job, if you're at that table, to make room for someone else and to invite the other person in and, and reach down and pull someone up with you. Is that something you could do? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, are you involved in organizations? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what organization are you involved? Uh, primarily uh, the PEO mm -hmm. uh, sorority for oh, okay. panelatic, uh, philanthropic educational organization helping women grow through raising money for scholarships. So I'm, I'm preaching to the choir right now. There you go. <laughs> we just had a card party today and raised about $3,000 for fantastic. women's scholarships. Excellent. See that? And um, for fun, I'm a member <laughs> of the ballroom 
Dance uh, Preservation Dance. Society? Yes. yes. And we're here today. Yes. The Ballroom Dance Preservation Society, also run by a woman. Also run Charlene by Charlene Doherty, who will be a guest on this show, by yes. the way. So that's great. All right, let me give you a couple of more ideas. Greet and compliment other women when you walk into a room or if you are already there and you see someone come through. Yes. Um, invite them over to uh, talk to your group, introduce them to other people. Or maybe it's a woman that you know that recently got a promotion or is working on a new project. Sure. That's something we can do, right? All right. Now, don't only look for other women to mentor, but ask others to be your mentor. It doesn't, age doesn't matter. You, That's right. Someone younger than you can be a mentor. You can be a mentor to someone older than you. There's always someone you can learn from. There you go. That's exactly right. And I'm 77. Now, did you have a mentor <laughs> growing up? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Who was your mentor? Well, I had a lot of mentors. I had grandparents, and uh, we had a housekeeper I learned from. That's it. Okay. You never know, because there's so many things to there learn from, from each other. There are women everywhere you can learn And from. everybody has all these different experiences that you can learn from. That's right. Okay. And finally, when you hear groups of people talking badly about someone or gossiping, what is the best advice you could give if you are just walking into that conversation? Stop. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell them to stop? You're going to just stop. Yeah. Okay. And if they persist, walk away. That's right. That's exactly the two things where I was going to suggest also, is definitely either defend that person, ask them to stop, or just, just don't eliminate, participate. don't participate. That's the best thing we can do for each other in order to fuel each other's flames and lift each other up. All right. Carol Pagelson of PEO. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for coming Thank up you. here. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so with all that in mind, I hope you enjoy your International Women's Day coming up on Friday. But we need to get this show started. So coming up next, we'll have our first guest, North Myrtle Beach City Mayor Marilyn Hatley. We'll be right back after this break. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill. Wine Spectators Award of Excellence. Voted Best of the Beach, 15 years. Classic Tableside Service. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill on Restaurant Row in Myrtle Beach. Visit thoroughbredsrestaurant.com. Welcome back to Balloon's Callaway Show, Our Voice Ignited, Episode 3, and we have a fabulous guest kicking it off. One of the first people I've met here in the Myrtle Beach area, yes. we were over at Broadway at the Beach, North Myrtle Beach City Mayor, we have Marilyn Hadley here joining us. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Liz. Uh, I am so happy to have you on. Now, we've had you on the guest for on the radio show yes. so many times. We've yes. talked to you so many times. But can you give us a little background about your life and how you got all the way up to North Myrtle Beach City Mayor? Because what is it, five terms? Yes, now? I'm on my fifth term now. Fifth term. So how many years is that? Well, this is my 17th year as mayor. Wow. I think she's doing something right. <laughs> because if they didn't, you know, they didn't think you were doing something right, you would have been voted And I out. was the first woman mayor. First female mayor of yes. North Myrtle Beach. Yes. We're here for a lot of firsts. I love it. Yes. So tell us about that because you were an entrepreneur in the community. Yes. So tell us about your experience. Okay. Well, first of all, believe me, when I, when I was growing up, never did I think I would be a mayor of a city, especially a city like North Myrtle Beach. Where did you grow up? I grew up near Charlotte, North Carolina, in a little town called Albemarle, North Carolina. And um, I, I grew up in a very um, strong family of women. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was uh, very smart and, and a hard worker, and she taught us girls to be very independent and to do what we think is right, to educate ourselves as much as we possibly mm -hmm. could. And so, you know, I, I had a good start to begin with. But when I moved to North Myrtle Beach, I moved from Columbia, South Carolina, where I worked for, in the Attorney General uh, 
actually, uh, I worked for one of the assistant attorney generals, and we did the work for the wildlife department. We did um, the work for all of the wetlands, the mm -hmm. marshlands, the beaches, and all that and all kind of stuff. all the environment is very important so, to North Myrtle Beach. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the good Lord was just setting <laughs> me up for this job. Um, so and when I moved here, there were just no jobs available whatsoever. I mean, I searched all over for a good job. Of course, that was in 1970 when the streets would roll up in the yeah. wintertime. <laughs> so um, I, th I was bored stiff, and I said, you know, I got to do something. My husband said, well, go do, you know, go do something. So I said, all right. I, and I went to cosmetology school. Okay. Just for fun. I had no idea that I was going to end up being in cosmetology, but I did, and I absolutely loved it. I loved being with the people. I loved talking and the whole bit, and when I got out, I, I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go on. I'm going to get my teacher's license so I can teach and so forth. In the meantime, we bought a business, and we bought another business, and we bought another business, and I ended up with 24 employees. And, wow. And, and in all, North Myrtle Beach? At, well, North Myrtle Beach and Myrtle Beach. Okay. I, had, I had salons all over the place. And so, I, and so I got really busy, and I stayed in cosmetology and absolutely loved it. But that's where I learned about people, and I had the pulse of the people. Mm -hmm. I knew what they cared about. I knew what they liked and what they disliked about their government, about you know what's going on you know, in the cities and so forth. It's very interesting because when we were talking uh, to someone from the state about domestic violence and human trafficking and things like that, one of the groups of people they reached out to to be on the uh, fighting in the trenches were salons yes. because they felt that uh, that people would be very honest with their with the people that worked in the salon and they would share yes. their story and they were actually the first line of defense against human trafficking and domestic You're right. violence. You're exactly right, and 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 that's because we we're touching someone, and when you touch someone and and you work with them, they they have trust in you, and so. We hear a lot of that, and you're exactly right. The, the, the domestic violence reached out to the salons. But anyway, I, you know, I got involved, and we'd always, I, listen, growing up, I heard politics all my life. My family <laughs> loved politics. They taught politics. I remember going to my grandparents' home. They taught politics all the time. So I already had that in my blood, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I got involved when I built my last, uh, my last salon, and I had some problems with the, gov with the city. And, I, and I, know, I found out that, you know, not everybody was treated the same. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I, I jumped through all the hoops and all the hurdles, but once I did, I said, I'm going to run for city council, and I'm going to try my best to make some changes where everyone's treated fairly. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what women do. Yes. That's what women do. We're, you uh, know, that's what people get confused, that feminism is, really has a bad connotation, but really it's about equality. Yes. It's about it's, equality. It's it, not about one being better than the other. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so I ran for city council, and of course I had against someone who'd been in for 21 years, and, and, and I was told there's no way, there's absolutely no way. But let me tell you, when you get a group of women behind you, mm -hmm. I belong to the North Myrtle Beach Women's Club, and that group of women started working, and I will never forget, a gentleman told my husband, your wife is never going to win that election. And he said, well, why do you say that? And he said, well, we were sitting around, and, and we've got it all figured out. And he said, well, how many of you were sitting around? He said, six. He said, well, let me tell you something. While the six of you were talking, we had 21 women working and, 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 and stuffing envelopes and working at my house wow. when I yeah, went I to work. That. And that makes a difference. <laughs> that makes a difference. Yes. yes. Now, now, that is, a, you know, did your husband learn, so what's your husband's name? David. David. Did he learn something from this experience, like watching you go through this and, and overcoming all these obstacles? What did he learn about men? Well, I, I think first he learned that uh, when, when you have the will of women mm -hmm. and the power of women, 
that it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. And uh, there's not too many men that want to make their wives mad. <laughs> uh, they don't want. They, they don't want. They don't want the cooking to stop, the cleaning to stop, for anything else. <laughs> so they, they, the women had a lot of influence on the men, mm -hmm. right. and that's how I won my first election. Now, now that was that was, you know, over. Oh. Oh, years ago? oh, that's... Uh, what is it, four-year terms? Yeah, it's a four-year four term. Four term, and I'm on my 17th year, and I was on city council five years prior wow. to that. Wow, okay. Yes. So now you have seen the city of North Myrtle Beach just change and evolve, but yet still keep the essential core of what North Myrtle Beach is about. That's so right. tell us about what your vision is for North Myrtle Beach, and uh, where have you seen it come from? Well... North Royal Beach is absolutely a wonderful place to live. We are a community, well, I, I'd say that it, we're different from a lot of uh, communities like ours. Uh, some, some areas are cities and some of them are communities. Mm -hmm. and, and we are what I call a community. Uh, the people from the north end to the south end of our city, we are friends. Mm -hmm. We go to church together. We're in clubs together. We, uh, we're on committees together, so we know each other. So many times in a city, from one end to the other, they have no idea who they are or, 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 right. or who lives where, mm -hmm. and they're not communicating. North Royal Beach communicates, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what makes us different than a lot of cities, and I think that's what makes us successful. It's the people that are in that mm -hmm. community yes. that makes us successful. You know, and, and a lot of people know North Myrtle Beach because it's like the shagging capital oh, yes. <laughs> of the world, I would say. I'm going to say the world. Yes. Would you say the world? I would think so, yes. So the, yes. Um, tell us about the SOS group. Oh, wow. Well. Well, you know, the, the SOS is the state dance, and we claim that it started right there in North Myrtle Beach on our Main Street. And uh, every year uh, we have several, we have the Spring Safari, we have the, the Fall Migration, we have several different uh, events that happen mm -hmm. throughout the city uh, for the Shaggers. We're happy to have them in our city. I, will, I have always said that North Royal Beach is a happy place. <laughs> it's a place yeah. where you can come and you can dance and you can laugh and you can enjoy yourself mm -hmm. and, um, and feel safe in it. Mm -hmm. And so we are happy to have our shaggers there and they come and so the 10, 12,000 at a time. That's and amazing, yeah. They just have a good time, and we're happy for them to have yeah, a good time. That's really, really great. Yes. Now, um, what is your vision for the future of North Myrtle Beach? Because we have heard a lot about this area called the Ingram Dunes, yes. and, and it's trying... So basically, well, you, you explain, because it's a, it's a very pristine piece of property that yes. many in the community want to preserve instead of having it being sold to a developer, right? Exactly. We have a group of people in our community that want us to preserve Ingram Dunes. The price of Ingram Dunes is over $3 million, uh, which is a, and it's just a very small piece of land. Wow. Uh, it, and it's a prime piece of land. It's beautiful. It has the dunes and the trees and so forth. And the city did designate 500000 from our city uh, general funds mm -hmm. for the Ingram Dunes. We applied for a grant and we just re received one of the largest grants a conservation bank has ever given, right. which is $510,000. And there were a lot of different But you groups. still need about a million so that's a, that's a, that's a, what a million and uh, ten thousand. Yeah. Uh, Ingram Dunes has raised uh, right at forty thousand dollars. So we're in negotiations with the uh, owner of Ingram Dunes. Do you think Dunes. it's going to happen? I don't know. We're working hard to make it okay. happen. I will tell you that. I, I can't. It has to happen by June, exactly. though, right? Because yes, the grant is only good to, through June. You have to use that money by June. Yes. So we're working on that. Mm -hmm. I hope it does happen. It's a beautiful piece of property. Now, it's the last piece of pristine property in the city of Myrtle Beach. I've, yes, at the, the present time. Yeah. At the present yeah. time, yes. Okay. Yes, it is. All right, so we'll see what happens. I hope it does happen. I do, it's too. Going to be a, I do too. It'll be an amazing thing. Now, what do you see happening for North Myrtle Beach moving forward? I, I know there was some 
some things that you've done differently with uh, golf carts and parking and yes. some development that's planned on both sides of 17? Yes, we have, uh, you know, one time we were very aggressive of, of uh, annexing land into the city, raw land of the city, and that's how we built our sports complex which has been a that, wonderful success. Has everyone been to the sports complex in North Myrtle Beach? Yeah. It is really well, beautiful. And, great and, job of that. You know, we added our Christmas show, and that has been a great success. Mm -hmm. uh, this coming year, we're getting ready to add a merry-go-round because uh, the kids love. You know, I, I, as I told the council, sometimes we need to do things that's just not about making money, mm -hmm. but it's about the quality of life. And our citizens, um, you know, we love them, and they uh, they put up with a lot with traffic, uh, with going to restaurants and waiting hour in line to to eat and so <laughs> forth. Um, and, and so we need to do some things for our citizens. Right. Uh, it doesn't always have to be a money making deal, okay? So we're adding some things so that our children can go out to the sports complex and not only play on the playground, but they have the merry-go-round and a little train ride, and it gives mm -hmm. the family something yes. to do, right. and that's so important. Let me tell you, any community, if they are not progressing and keeping their young people in their community, they're going to die. They're going to mm -hmm. die on the vine. You, uh, I mean, us retirees, we can't just keep everything going all the time forever. We need these young people and these young families in our community, and we need to provide activities for all of these young people right. and these young families. And that's what we're trying to do with the sports complex, with the, with the aquatic fitness center, mm -hmm. with all that of the programs place, yeah. that we have for our children. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, we try to do things to keep our tourists in our area. We have, we have all the music on Main, and, and, and this year there's going to be even more at the, the Barefoot, uh, the, the barefoot yes, Landing yes, area. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we've just got That's an done under a tremendous transformation. At oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So we just did a festival. We changed an ordinance so we can have a festival zone so festivals can be held there. Yes. Um, <laughs> So we're doing a lot of exciting things. Uh, we're happy and we work hard and mm -hmm. we're just moving well, forward. Well, that's why she keeps uh, getting reelected. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so now I have to ask you, because I, I talked about in the beginning of the show, International Women's Day and yes. different things that we can do to help women in our community continue to um, branch out and grow and fuel each other's flame. Yeah. What do you think that we can do to get more women in leadership roles, whether it's on council or in politics or um, in, you know, entrepreneurs. I mean, well, you've been you've been through all of that. I have. So, I what have. can we do for each other, or what can we do for ourselves, even, to put ourselves in a, in a position to achieve those those things? Well, first of all, I want women to realize that you are capable of running for office. You have the resources. You have the talent. You have so much more to offer than a, a, a lot of people do, mm -hmm. um, and, and a different perspective. So don't ever think that you're not smart enough, you're not trained enough, or you're not capable of running for office. Second of all, we need to support women. Mm -hmm. Women need to support women in office. Uh, like I said at the beginning, if I had not had the, the North Myrtle Beach Women's Club to support me and my first round and my second, well, ever, every round, yes. my whole committee comes from there, um, I, I would not be where I am today. Women need to support women. So joining organizations like you that. You need to be yeah. involved in women's organizations, yes, because that's where you make, make your best friends. That's where you make your workers and people who love you and trust you. Mm. And you have to have the love and the trust for it to move forward into a, an office, especially a political office. And another thing, don't ever forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. The working people put me in. I was a working person, and the working people put me in. And I never forget those working people and make sure that their, their needs are taken care mm -hmm. of. And, and that's you still what listen. you must You're do. You're still listening. Yes, you keep yeah. listening. Keep listening. Yes. Well, I, I'm just so thrilled to have you here. 
Uh, I'm yeah. thrilled to be I, here. I'm really, really happy. And I know you're off to a meeting. Right. I am. I'm going to North Myrtle Beach Women's Club. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to join the North Myrtle Beach Women's Club, I mean, that's where all the action is, right? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I thank really, you, really uh, feel honored that you came here. Well, and congratulations on your new job. Thank you. And I love this new show. It's well, thank you. wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. North yes. Myrtle Beach City Mayor, Marilyn Hadley. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We'll be thank back you. after this. Due to their relationship with numerous insurance companies, Carrie Johnson Insurance is able to offer personal and commercial lines of insurance, including home, auto, wind and hail and flood, as well as general liability and business owners insurance. Carrie Johnson Insurance is located at 9290 Highway 17 Bypass in Merle's Inlet. Give them a call, 843-357-9404, or visit them online, carriejohnsoninsurance.com. They would be honored to help you with all your insurance needs. I have met Linda. I had met Linda. Uh, oh, wow! Maybe four or five years ago when I first came here, she was running a program called Ollie, which was a continuing education program. And of course, she always was involved with movable feast. So I want you to tell Linda. Please tell everybody what movable feast is. I I cannot believe the passion you have for this program and what you've been able to do with it. Well, um, the movable feast was taken from the title of one of Ernest Hemingway's novels. And it, it talked about Paris, which I love, but um, our version of the Movable Feast is a literary luncheon that happens every Friday, year round, now for 21 years. And um, we bring in a different author every week, and they're big. They're people like David Baldacci and Greg Isles and Dorothea Benton Frank and Mary Alice Monroe and really the, the beach reads that everyone loves, the mysteries that everyone loves, and a lot of um, nonfiction as well. Um, we are, it is, has become such a success. We recently put out the word that Delia Owens, the author of Where the Crawdads Sing, was coming. And in four days, we had filled it with 360 people. That is incredible. She's oh, not even you? coming until May 6th. <laughs> <laughs> is it sold out? It's sold out. It's sold out. And there's wow. a lot of people on the wait list. But um, it's, it's become quite successful to the point that we have to have some on Mondays and some on Tuesdays and some on Wednesdays, as well as every Friday. Wow. So it's not just Fridays now. Um, so it's quite a big undertaking. I do all of this with um, a team of about six volunteers. Mm -hmm. And they have been loyal, um, one for 20 years. Um, well, they also get to meet all these fabulous They get authors, to meet all so. of that. That's, I guess that's considered <laughs> the their salary. Yes. Um, they now, get to come to the lunch. And if course. someone wanted to find out about where your schedule is, do you have your schedule online? It is. Okay. Um, we have a website, and when you look on the website, it's called Class at Polly's. And CLASS, C-L-A-S-S, -S, stands for Community Learning About Special Subjects. And it as you can imagine, it covers pretty much anything we want to do. It's not just the movable feast, it's art classes, it's an art gallery, it's a publishing house. I've published about a dozen books now for Brook Green Gardens and individual really? authors around. So you, if there are some budding authors out there, they can contact absolutely, you? Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. So um, the website is called Class at Polly's. And we named it before, back in the early days, before I realized that everyone was going to think that that was the at sign, but it really is class AT Polly's. Okay. So it's all written out, class at Polly's.com. And it will show all of the special events that we have. For example, this Saturday, we've got an amazing um, blues singer. He's 85 years old. 
coming to Hop Cob Barony. Um, his name is Drink, joke. Drink Small. That's, That's his, his name. name? Drink, it's his <laughs> christened name, Drink Small. And um, he's blind and he was um, run over by a cotton wagon when he was a little boy. And his family all picked cotton and he couldn't pick cotton so he picked a guitar. And wow, now at 85 years old, he can still just blow the roof off of a wow. venue. He's just amazing. That, now, is that how does how do people find out about how to go? It's all on my website. Okay. Class so at Polly's. Class at Polly's dot com. <laughs> now, the other reason why I invited Linda here because one of the one of her passions, and and you are in the Polly's Island community. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about walk them on neck. It's an area of Polly's that, uh, that gets a lot of attention, and they are trying hard to keep it very community-oriented, trying to keep out those big box stores. You've been very successful, that community, as so doing far. This, so far. <laughs> and so it's really intact. But one of the things they're trying to do is bike the neck, is what they're calling it. So tell us about that. That's her shirt. My shirt. <laughs> I have a whole wardrobe of bike of the bike neck, neck t-shirts, <laughs> all colors. Um, this started in 1994, so that's wow, how that's long, long time. I, and from 1994 to 2019, we've put in 16 miles of bike paths. They're bike and walking paths, and I must say that um, our mayor's intro was perfect because her words about community were just so true. Um, that was the purpose of our interest in starting the bike paths. Um, everybody got in their car. It started when I went to lunch one time, meeting a friend. She drove her car a mile and a half. I drove my car a mile and a half. And we sat at lunch and said, you know, if we just had walking paths or biking paths through this community, we could we could work off this glass of wine <laughs> on our way home. But, but it, you know, it, we didn't. There was no place. The whole community was separated by Highway 17, as we all experienced that. Mm -hmm. And so if you lived on the beach side, all the shopping was on the other side. And the library was on the other side. And, and so you got in your car, and off you went. And you drove past your neighbors without ever saying, hey. That's right. And that is one of the most unifying elements of a community, are people having the opportunity to talk to one another. And the bike path, which is also a walking path, provides that. And we have seen over these 27, 28 years now that um, the activity in the community increased the commitment to community has increased. Um, we, it's very easy to fold in the tourists um, because they all come with their bikes on, you know, hooked onto the cars and offload them and off they go and pay no attention to the rules of the road. <laughs> but the neighborhood says, hey, you might want to get on the other side of the road you might want to ride with the traffic and walk against it, or you'll find your children <laughs> in other than pristine condition. Um, it's just there are, it's been a real unifying force. And we are putting on a fundraiser soon, um, the end of this month, March 23rd. Um, to raise money for the last little stretch. There is a almost, not quite a one mile, stretch between Huntington Beach State Park. If you've ever been down to Huntington Beautiful, Beach yes. State Park and you come down the um, pathway, you hit North Litchfield and you have to turn in and ride on the road to get to the other connecting um, part of the bike path. Um, I live in North Litchfield and it's, um, my neighbors are not very happy with me because the traffic has increased and increased and increased and they ought to be on a bike path mm -hmm. instead of on the road. Yes. So um, 
we're going to get that stretch in. We have all the easements and all the permits that we need. Oh, that's great. How much, how, how much money is it going to cost? It's going to be about $300,000. All right. When we first proposed doing it, it was only, I think it was 97000 so that was about eight years ago, and that's just been the increase in the wow. cost of asphalt and the cost of um, wetlands permits and building materials and labor. Wow. So we need to get it in before it you know, goes, up again. goes up again. All right, so this is the event that I was looking at here. Yeah. Um, spring for Bike the Neck in the Litchfield Exchange. It's going to be Saturday, March 23rd from 2 to 5 p.m., Tell us about what it is exactly. Well, we, the Litchfield Exchange is an adorable um, internal mall. Um, it is sort of buried. It has Applewood's House of Pancakes out yes. in front of it. But behind that is this very sweet mall. And we take over the atrium. It has a fountain in the center. Um, I have um, bike path um, or the bike rental place, Cyclopedia, is coming with some of the brand new bikes. I don't know if you've seen the ones that have tires oh, that yeah, look the like this. Tires. They're really yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> so they're going to bring some of their newer bikes and they're going to provide free um, adjustments to handlebars and seat levels and brakes if people ride their bikes there and give free estimates for repairs if it's beyond what they can do on site. And um, We've got um, a group from Georgetown County called Tour de Plantersville, and they are creating a big ride that's going to come um, through the Plantersville community. And so they're going to be there, too, to promote their um, efforts. And another club is putting on, I think it's the Lions Club, is putting on um, a bike rodeo uh, at the at one of the parks on the Welcome on Neck, and so they're going to be there to promote the bike rodeo, and that's a place where children can learn rules of the road and safety and um, how to avoid accidents, things like that. So they'll all be there, but so will about a dozen authors, local authors, oh. about a dozen local artists. They lease a table and their their table fee goes to bike the neck mm -hmm. and um, they set up their wares and so they'll be stuff to look at and um, buy perhaps and we'll have great refreshments and we have the Polly's Island Jazz Quintet playing. Oh, you have a lot going on. And that will be a big day wow. and it's just from two to five in the afternoon. Um, I tend to do everything in the daytime because I, like the rest of my septuagenarians, <laughs> do not like to ride, drive at night. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> so it's going to be Saturday, March 23rd from 2 to 5. You can go to class at paulies.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, well, here's the number. I'm going to give you the phone number just in case. 843-235-9600. Linda? It's so great to have you here, and Thank I always you. love interviewing you. You have so much energy and just such good spirit, and you've done really so much for the community, and it's really amazing. It's remarkable. Thank, Thank you, you for all you do. Thank you. Linda Ketchon, I Connect, ClassicPolies.com. All right, we'll be back with our next guest after this. South Strand is a nonprofit organization that provides food and relief assistance for those in need. South Strand Helping Hand depends solely on volunteers and donations from the public. If you wish to donate or find yourself needing assistance, please stop by Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. South Strand Helping Hand is located at 812 South Poplar Drive in Surfside Beach. Find them on Facebook or call 843-238-4594. today, but um, I have to uh, introduce a friend of mine, Jennifer Johnson. I've known her since I've been working at, uh, had been working at Dick Broadcasting Company. She is a sales executive there, but also she has quite the story to tell. And, um, and I, first of all, welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Jennifer, 
when I first met you, one of the um, one of the interviews that we did was for uh, Lily Palooza on the radio, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what Lily Palooza was, but uh, but it was something that Jennifer put together for a very special young lady. So tell us about how Lily Palooza came to be. Well, okay, on December 8th, 2011, uh, my daughter was sent to MUSC, and we arrived there. She was put into the PICU unit, and she was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, she was six years old, and so we started our journey with my daughter having cancer. Uh, the year after she had gotten diagnosed was the first year of Lily Palooza. Her and three other children were beneficiaries that year, and then the next years that we did it, we raised the money all for other local children fighting cancer, even though Lily was still fighting cancer herself. This year will be our eighth annual Lily Palooza. That's amazing. And uh, it's not our, gonna be our only event anymore. Back in September, I started my own 5013C. We had always run the money through a 5013C, but we had done it through another cancer organization out of Charleston. And they kept all the money here locally for us. But we've just kind of been growing and growing and growing and wanted to start our own 5013C, which is how Cancer Heroes of the Carolinas came about. Now, when you started this program, it was for a particular reason because of the fact that you saw the, str you experienced the struggle. So talk about the struggles of what parents of children who, who are diagnosed with cancer go through and what is it that they need? Absolutely. Well, it, it, when, you know, the, the child has the disease, but the whole cam family has the cancer. It is very tough. I was a single mother. I could not work. Uh, had it not been for people raising money for me and the organizations that helped me out, there is no way that I could have survived. And so... And you have other children. Two other children. Yeah. And, and most of the time when, when a family has a child that has cancer, one, if not both of the parents at time lose their jobs because the one parent is at the hospital trying to take care of the child with cancer and the other parent, normally the father, is at home trying to juggle everything that the mother normally does and work his job. And so it's not always a good situation. A lot of times marriages are ruined because of it. Uh, it's very hard on the family. It's very hard on the siblings. There's a lot of long-term effects that problems that they have because their parents have been ripped away from them, their sibling has been taken from them, and sometimes permanently. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's not an easy thing for the family to right. endure. Yeah. Now, when, when you help, when you're able to raise money during Lily Palooza, where does that funding really go to? Where, how do you use that money to help people? Yeah. Well, um, what we, we do a lot of different things. Uh, no one on our board is paid at all. Nobody gets paid for any of the work that we do. Uh, I wanted it written that way for the next few years so that uh, it was just never a question. All of the money goes directly to the families. And the way that we help the families is there's a, a, a ton of different ways, but we help them with gas cards to get to and from the hospital, cafeteria cards while they're at the hospital so that they're not paying an arm and a leg and having to eat out every day. Um, we also help with their you know, their, their uh, rent, their mortgage, we help with their taxes, we help with their car, we help with their car taxes, their car insurance, their electric bill, if they need new tires for their vehicle. One of our most recent families had mold in their house and could not bring their sick child back home to their house wow. uh, because they had mold. So I contacted a local business that did mold remediation and begged, borrowed and stealed and cried a little bit and <laughs> talked them into. Uh, helping our family get the mold out and the very nice gentleman did he came to their house and helped with everything and then we had to have someone come in and steam clean the carpets and things of that nature so there's a lot of other things that we do um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of support for the children uh, through other organizations whether it be make-a-wish I'm sure everybody's familiar with that there's also camp happy days out of Charleston that does camp for the, ch the children in South Carolina but what I found is being a cancer mom that there was no support for the parents and so where we step in is we not only monetarily help the family so that they can take care of their child, but we also do mom's nights out. We do a dad's fishing trip because the dads often say, tell me that they feel so alone that there's a little bit of support for the moms, but there's nothing for the dads. So we've started planning things like that and trying to do more family events here locally. 
in the next month or so, we're going to take everybody out to dinner uh, to one of the local restaurants that's offered to give us a heck of a deal and mm -hmm. let us bring all the families out and just, you know, let them mingle and get to know one another. I am lucky that I make contact with all of them and know all of them, but a lot of them haven't met each other because they're not always at the hospital at the same time. And one of the biggest things they ask me for is to be around other women. You know, I, I was just thinking about, I, I don't even want to think about it, but I can't even imagine the feeling of your child being diagnosed with such a serious illness and how small your world becomes and how lonely and isolated you must feel. So not only is this organization something that's providing like monetary support, but but just the camaraderie. I mean, I, I follow you on Facebook, so I see all the relationships that you have with so many people and the, uh, the words of support and resources, right? I mean, is that what actually happens? It's a, I, it's I a, do what a I can. you don't want to be a member of, but it, it it's absolutely important is. to have such It patients. absolutely is. Um, and, and I, you know, speaking of <laughs> International Women's Day, yeah. I always laugh. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Planet Fitness's uh, slogan, but they yeah. say it's a no judgment zone. <laughs> and that is what I call my cancer moms. Uh, they are mothers that they might not be from the same background as me in, in any way. And, you know, when your child has cancer, they might, uh, there's been times that they don't even speak the same language that I do. And when your child has cancer, it always only takes one look into that mother's eyes to know her fears, her worries, her pain, her hopes, her prayers. Yeah. You just know it because it's, you're, you've been in her shoes. Yeah. And so a lot of my time is as well spent with, with mentoring the mothers, letting them know about some of the, the tricks of the trade, I guess you say, of being a cancer mom, because um, there are some just with anything yeah. else. Now, Lily Palooza still happens every year. Lily Palooza still happens. We are also uh, planning a water poker run this year. Okay. Yes. A water? Yes. What is that? On boats. On of boats? Bikes. Wow. Has that ever been done? Not around here. Wow. Okay. <laughs> When's that going to be? Uh, we're still working on the date because okay. i got to get with the DNR, but we're in June. it will be in June. In June. Yes. Okay. And that's a fundraiser for... Now, your organization, this is your new organization? That Cancer got... Heroes of the Carolinas. Okay. Unfortunately, I have not had our website built yet. That's been a little bit of an issue. Okay. But we do have a Facebook page. And um, I do have some business cards if anybody wants any. One of the other ways, I know we're talking about helping women yeah. and, and empowering women. One of the things, if you are in a women's club, like I just spoke with the mayor and said, hey, you know that women's club you're going to? I'd love to come talk to y'all. And yeah. she said, yeah, that'd be great. So if you are in any of our organizations that you know think that it might be interesting to hear what we're doing with these local kids in the community, That's I would love to come project. and talk to them. That's really great. And that's what this show is about, is about making these connections and learning about what's out there. I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people never heard of Cancer Heroes yes. of the Carolinas, but look at the amazing work. How many people have you been able to help since you've been doing this type of work? Can you, have you ever kept, even kept count? I know we have close to 60 moms in the Facebook page that I, wow. that I have for the Ori Georgetown Cancer There's Moms. There's that so. many children that have been mm -hmm. sick with cancer. And since Lily has been diagnosed, I have been to eight children's funerals. Wow. And, um, but, but I know, I don't, but I don't mean to make, make people sad. Look, there's always a bright side to everything. And the bright side is that because of the generosity of the people in this community, we have been able to help these par parents bury their children because that is a cost that wow. you should not have yeah. to deal with. And it is a very scary cost when all your funds have been depleted because you've been trying to help your, your sick child mm. beat this cancer, and the next thing you know, they're gone. I have been able to help these families bury their children. I've been at the mother's side holding their hands during the whole entire process. And so it is, it is a blessing in that way because we have been blessed by the love of this community and the people reaching out. We have been able to be a big blessing to these parents and to these children. I told you she was remarkable, didn't I? I have a very special, Karen, can you come and make your presentation? Uh, Karen Button is my executive producer here. She makes everything happen. She's my mentor and she's an amazing woman. But she has come up with this wonderful idea of making, uh, acknowledging 
heroes in our community, Aww. hometown heroines, and uh, she presents this award, and we would love you to have oh it. Oh my gosh, I've never gotten an award. <laughs> yeah, you deserve an award. You deserve an award. Here's your name, Kyle, and everything. Thanks. It's in the shape of a flame because you're fueling the flame Aww. of so many I love it. Thank you. You're making me thank cry. You. Don't Aww. do that. Well, thank you for everything you do. And I know you work so hard, and, and it's like beyond a passion. So it's thank you. It's an honor to know you. I'm you. sad you're leaving us. But I know, I know. We'll, I know we'll still be <laughs> in contact. You'll so. the Pelicans, yeah. Yes. Now I can bring the cancer kids out there. Yes. We have to bring a wonderful <laughs> event. We certainly do. A fundraising event. Well, um, Jennifer, is there anything else you want to say? Maybe uh, Facebook? There's a yes. Facebook page. Just check out our Facebook page, and I'll be over there. If you want any information, I can give you my card, and I'd love to talk to anybody. Yes. That sounds great. Jennifer Johnson from Cancer Heroes of the Carolina, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back back to say our goodbyes in just a moment. Liz Calloway here for Conway Ford. Here are your Hot Talk headlines. 2019 is going to be a huge year for Conway Ford. As you can see, we're expanding to serve you better. And yes, we're open during construction. The factory has allocated us extra inventory during our remodel. We need to sell these vehicles because space is limited. Andy Loan can save you thousands plus all factory rebates. Now that's something hot to talk about. Well, that is our third episode of The Liz Calloway Show. I am just begging you to go onto our YouTube channel and subscribe because that's how you're going to be able to catch up on all our previous episodes and also find out where we'll be next. Uh, our next show will be announced on our Facebook page, so be sure to follow that as well. Just go on to The Liz Calloway Show on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill. Wine Spectators Award of Excellence. Voted Best of the Beach 15 years. Classic Tableside Service. Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill on Restaurant Row in Myrtle Beach. Visit thoroughbredsrestaurant.com.